let's do this uh, Bill Maher thing. Talk about like old man, get off my lawn. And I don't, I don't. How old is Bill Maher? Are we we're not the same. Uh, he's got to be older than me. He's got he's got to be like ten years older than me, maybe at least. Um, I can tell you that I can't say this with a hundred percent surety. But the idea that Bill Maher has any clue as to what's going on in public schools <laughs> is uh, absurd. Is absurd. Bill Maher, never mind like all the people you sequester with him. Like I, I, I would be surprised if Bill Maher knows anybody. Goes to public has kids that go to public school. Yep. Yeah. Let alone the fact that he doesn't have kids himself. Right. Yep. I would also uh, wager a bet that Bill Maher has not talked to any educators in at least a decade. I don't know if he ever did before then, but this dude, so coasting on just old man shit now, it's unbelievable. Uh, but here he is. He knows where he's getting his views on, on social media. This is what this is all about because people had forgotten that his show was on. And, you know, I understand that, that it hurts. Uh, I've been there, uh, but um, it's really just a, a testament to how low he will, he will go to get that. But here it is, picture of like, and this is actually super apropos too. Uh, go ahead. And finally, new rule, you can get creative with a novel, a TV show or a movie, but history books, that's not supposed to be fan fiction. How we teach our kids history has become a big controversy these days with liberals accusing conservatives of wanting to whitewash the past. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes they do. But plenty of liberals also want to abuse history to control the present. And last month, a scholar named James Sweet caught hell for calling them out for doing just that. He criticized a phenomenon known as presentism, which means judging everyone in the past by the standards of the present. It's the belief that people who lived 100 or 500 or 1,000 years ago really should have known better. <laughs> Which is so stupid. It's like getting mad at yourself for not knowing what you know now when you were 10. <laughs> stupid me, spending all that time raising sea monkeys and... <laughs> playing with slot cars and jerking off to a playboy in the barn. <laughs> Who doesn't have moments from your past that make you cringe? Who hasn't said, I can't believe I said that? I can't believe I wore that. I can't believe I thought that. I can't believe I did that. You ate dirt. You wanted to be a ghostbuster. You shoplifted gum. You tried to be a white break Pause it for one you second. What, uh, I mean, is this a laugh track or are they paying these people to actually laugh? I don't know. Sometimes uh, when you're in a I setting think the audience like is that, there. Yeah. Sometimes when you're in a setting like Gassed that, up. you just like, uh -huh, reflexively. This, but, uh, how do they know which things to laugh at and not? Like, I mean, you I don't stole know. gum. Oh, <laughs> you did the triangle slave trade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. What? what are we talking we won't about? Watch the, right. We won't watch the whole thing, but this, I think it's, it's, I think I it's instructive. Going, yeah. You wanted to marry Scott Baio. <laughs> I read Ayn Rand. <laughs> I smoked. I was into numerology. Yes, because we hadn't then grown into the persons we would become. And humanity writ large is just the collective version of that. No. no. Did Columbus commit atrocities? Of course. But people back then were generally atrocious. <laughs> but, I'm sorry. Can we just pause everybody. for a sec? Like, this is not how you view systems. Like, this is a, a conservative argument by nature, which is distilling choices that are made by powerful actors in order to increase profits in order to exert power in order to dominate to like having a poster of scott Bayo on your wall when you were a child i mean it's laughable well i mean is is what his message is let me see if i got this right 
the Nazis just hadn't evolved past the idea of genocide. Pol Pot just had, I mean, that happened 60 years ago. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, what, 60 plus yeah, f uh, 40 years ago. I mean, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, I was eating, I was playing with the sea monkeys myself. I mean, the like what where, like where does Dr. Maher believe that we should or Mar uh, believe that we should w w that it's it's okay? I mean, it's not like contemporaneously there weren't people going like, hey, maybe we shouldn't have slavery. Yeah, like like uh, there's a reason why slavery ended, uh, and there's a reason why it existed. It was making a lot of people a lot of money. Yeah, um, like I. Like it, it's unclear, like what he's referring to, and the idea that that history judges people—that's just like it's also a uh, like a category error in terms of what's going on in terms of history. Yeah, I mean, they're not worried about somebody saying like they shouldn't have owned slaves and they're bad people for it. Like, I mean, who cares? Of course, they're bad people for it, but. It's not like those people are going to have to stand trial now. It is really just contextualizing uh, that that what happened there. But the facts are the most important part. Yeah, and it also it it it's a smear against people in general. It it blames everyone for elite crime. So like the Spanish Empire, for instance, before Britain got their empire off the ground, Spain was running things. There was what was called the Black Legend, which is they're doing all the slavery and killing over there. And we wouldn't do that if we were able to like, you know, grow the our colonies to be that size. So like there was contemporaneous criticism of all this stuff uh, during the time that also includes you know the uh 1800s american slavery people were criticizing us so when you act like everyone's just oh yeah we all think this is good now you're basically smearing humanity for elites that well, are and erasing the work what? of activists and abolitionists if we're talking about slavery as and just to to perceive history as passive fables that just exist and then the tide of history moves towards now so you you can't judge a tide it's just natural and, and is he under the impression that there were more slave owners than there were slaves? I mean, yeah, is it like, right. if you're like, you're going to judge humanity in these general terms, right? Like humanity hadn't evolved. Uh, there were more slaves than slave owners. Yeah. Where slavery existed. And the, the, the idea that we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the slave owners as opposed to the slaves. <laughs> Never mind the people in the middle who are just like, I don't have the ability to change this system. And that's exactly when he starts off the segment by saying what history should not be biased in, in a sense. Like it already is based on the fact that your immediate trigger is to think of things from the perspective of the powerful, a.k.a. slave owners or the people that write the history. That's what history is biased towards. Like, I mean, ask an average American about uh, how many lives were lost in World War II on the United States side and how many were lost on, say, the Soviet side and who played a role more in terms of body count in that war? Ask them. And, and then you'll understand why history is already biased towards... Uh, of course. There the, is no such thing as unbiased anything. Right, right. It is... The victors. Uh, let's just play a little bit more. Columbus commit atrocities? Of course. But people back then were generally atrocious. <laughs> That's not true. They were generally, gen, people, people were generally victims yep. of powerful people committing atrocities. Mm -hmm. Yep. Continue. Everybody who could afford one had a slave, including no. people of color. The way people talk about slavery these days, you'd think it was a uniquely American thing that we invented in 1619. But slavery throughout history has been the rule, not the exception. The Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Greeks, Romans, the Arabs, British, the early Americans, all the way up through R. Kelly. That's so, that's so hilarious. Disgusting. We should joke about that right now. Libya. The Holy Bible is practically an owner's manual for slaveholders. 
The word slave comes from Slav. Because so many Slavic it. didn't this dude do a whole documentary on the horrors of religion? Mm-hmm. I mean, I would put that up there on some level. It's sort of like cutting into his uh, yeah. prior work a little bit. It, that's a Confederate argument, and they might be right about and, it. To be honest, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, they're they're um, like countering like sort of like Black liberation folks from that time that made a compelling argument that the, there are things you can find in the Bible that are liberatory, but it's arguable. All right, continue. People were enslaved, and they're as white as the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> oh, I see now. Wait a second. Sl- I see. That's weird. Okay. So we started with presentism, and now, how many minutes are we in? It's really about why are white people being subject to... This isn't a story... This isn't about... Let's be clear. This is not about uh, Bill Maher being upset about what's happening with the academic development of history. This is Bill Maher being upset that white people are being demonized. Mm. This is literally the Candace Owens segment that we played last Thursday. She did that and said that colonialism actually was a net positive for the African continent. And here's why. Like, they, I mean, just, just an understanding of who he's speaking to there. I mean... What what does what does this like he hasn't this is the funny thing about it. He's done this whole segment so far and he hasn't said the actual premise. No, and he has spent like eighty percent of the time on just like cultural references to his but, childhood. Well, but no, but look at where he's going. I know. Slav, white people, even black people own slaves. Wait, what? This started out with you didn't like about what's going on with history, and he's sort of hiding the ball there. And no one says slavery is uniquely American. We say that chattel slavery is uniquely connected to like Western uh, colonialism and white supremacy. Yeah, that's the reality. Come right out and say, I don't like all of this holding white people to some type of higher standard than they should be held to. Just be honest with your commentary instead of like this sort of like vague dog whistle yeah. shit. I just remind folks that Bill Maher is a guy in like 1999 was going on to a panel with Whoopi Goldberg and Dennis Prager. This is online where his argument was that Vietnam, like even though it was inter- uh, bad and everything, we needed to do it to somebody to prove a point about American might. So that <laughs> is um, the that was exactly the Thomas Friedman argument as to why we needed to go to Iraq. Hmm. Suck on this. Suck on this. We needed to show those uh, from Baghdad to Basra, what part of this do you not understand? That type of thing. I mean, this is just unbelievable. I mean, it's just, it's so, I don't know what's worse if it's just like he's letting his freak flag fly now because he's old or he's just doing it because he's chasing the bucks and he's trying to stay relevant. But it's gross. I mean, he's always kind of had resentment towards um, towards like what he perceives to be as a, a leftist activists that are alienating his ilk. And this is just like all his politics are now, now that there's no Iraq war anymore. Yeah, I mean, he's a liberal imperialist. And also that documentary Religious, I remember like being into Bill Maher when I was a kid because I was becoming an atheist and I watched that crap. It was one of the most, it was such condescending garbage. And all of his like atheism in the end, you find out given his proclivity for Sam Harris is just a cover for his Islamophobia. He's a bigot. That's what he is. Um, It turns out uh, militant apathy, uh, I am, this is a good point. Chattel slavery did start around that time. Right. So he says 1619. I think it's arguable as to whether it was, uh, you know, maybe 1500s. But this was in the context of like colonize an entire continent. Like the, he yeah, said, like the Americas, the Americas aren't distinctly like distinct for slavery. It's like, well, actually, this continent and or bo- the, both these continents would not have been able to be conquered without slave labor. And to be clear, chattel slavery basically means there's a, a legal infrastructure for the ownership of these people. Right. Pa- inheritable to the children. As opposed to sort of like. I conquered you and I held you here. Yeah. Right. Uh, tribal slavery. Yeah. 
Usually when somebody wants... more sophisticated, yeah, e- and we're providing food and shelter. Right. Yeah, usually when people make that distinction, they're uh, going into deep Confederate territory. Um, folks, I, I'm, I'm afraid we're not going to get to more calls. I'm a bad person. I'm no. a bad person. Jesus. I, look, you can't hold me to it, because I said calls an hour ago, and I can't go back. That's presentism. <laughs> Um, well, we, I mean, I That's think presentism. I knew we wouldn't get to a ton of calls because if we had the uh, Ilhan Omar interview, I, know, which which I'm sh- I hope that was worth it. To, and we'll do calls tomorrow. Yeah, but they, don't judge me. It's presentism. I didn't know an hour ago that I wouldn't take that many calls. <sighs> God, you people. People are atrocious. Wait, uh, been, people were atrocious back then, an hour ago. Now they're not so much. <laughs> oh, uh, one other note, uh, Cromwell, when he was uh, leading the protectorate after they cut off uh, uh, Charles's head, um, they were building a bunch of boats up in the Thames in London, presumably to go um, to the Americas and do something. And the, the sort of like uh, narrative about that was they were going to go free those colonies from the... Uh, the dastardly and brutal Spanish. Ah. And yeah, so like liberal intervention narratives existed then. Right. Oh, that's it's just good a, who are we going to decide yeah. is actually a human and who's not? Yep. J Bags, saying the grown ass men that wrote the guiding document of our country couldn't and shouldn't have known better is saying we shouldn't be so quick to modernize that document. The mentality that allows people to think of human history as analogous to the stages of an individual life <laughs> is the same mentality that makes people think national spending is the same as household budgeting. Boom. These people see images from Webb and say that this picture of a smudge cost $100 billion because it hurts their brains to see beyond their own noses. Indeed. In fact, you know, like uh, Steiner Waldorf, like the, the, the super like... They teach kids based upon human development. Mm. So like in first grade, you learn Hebrew, even though they are uh, sort of a Christian based education, because that's the human stage of evolution. And just sit with that for a while and, and, and think about how constructed the idea that human beings develop on an annual basis or a bi-monthly basis or a six-month basis in the same way that all of human history develops and then sort of work that out as to like how would you educate somebody 2000 years ago (laughs) or how would you educate 2000 years from now like it's just absurd it's absurd 